Hello, welcome to another animal painting tutorial. My name is Lauren Elizabeth and this is Rizzo. He is a little kitten we recently adopted. He is both extremely naughty and outgoing and super sweet and affectionate and he makes us laugh constantly. And I thought he would just make the most perfect pet model to paint and so I made him just try to capture his rambunctious, <laughs> goofy personality, and I just absolutely adore this kitty, um, as despite him getting into tons of trouble all the time. He loves to chew through cords. He loves to get into absolutely everything. He is always wrestling the dogs and the other cat we have named Meow, and the thing that I think is just the sweetest is he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He is just so kind and he never gets frustrated and he just has the most playful, outgoing personality I have ever met in a cat and he loves to snuggle as well. So when he's not in his crazy rambunctious mood, he loves to snuggle and sit in your lap and get real close. Now, if you didn't already know, the month of September, I am holding a paint your pet challenge where you can win special prizes. But this is where we're gonna paint Rizzo so that we can learn how to paint any cat. So whether you're painting your own cat or somebody else's cat for the challenge, this is a great place to start. So first what I did was I painted a canvas an 8x10 with orange paint, let that dry, and then with a palette knife I added Naples yellow, Indian yellow, and titanium white, spread that all over, let that dry, and then I used a my traceable printout which I transferred to the canvas and printed off my reference photo which I would recommend you do right now. And after all that said and done, I am going in with my Mars black and painting in just the black part of Rizzo. And like I said, all those things are in the description box below. That's the reference photo and then the traceable printout. And if you've never used a traceable printout, I have, um, there is instructions that I put as well in the description box how to transfer that properly. The brush I'm using right now is a small flat brush. You're welcome to use whatever brush you feel comfortable with, but I didn't mix anything into my black. It's just straight black. And so this is just a great way to kind of get in the mood, get creative and get loosened up. So take this time just to turn on some good music or get comfy, grab a cup of coffee and let's paint. When you notice that your black paint becomes kind of tacky or sticky on your canvas, that's a good indicator that it's time to wash out your brush and then reapply paint. And if you enjoy painting animals like wildlife or your pets and you want to reduce some stress, I've created an online animal art masterclass designed for people going through anxiety, depression, or even addiction. And we create a variety of different animals using all types of mediums. And so if you're interested in that, I have all the links down below. Now we're moving on to Rizzo's face. This is just gonna be black going around the eyes, on the ears and making sure to leave that white part on the snout and on the top of the head. Um, so just watch me and, and my paint placement.
If it's easier to paint the eyes with a detail brush, go right ahead. I probably should have done that when I was painting Rizzo's eyes because throughout the painting I have to keep fixing the eyes because I it was altered in this step. So don't make that mistake. I would definitely recommend you use a smaller brush. Now you don't have to do this step, but as we wait for the black to dry, because going over white over top wet black paint is kind of a mess, so I would say let that dry. But what I'm doing now is I'm actually covering over the parts of the background that were covered with my charcoal paper. Uh, the way I transfer my traceable is using charcoal transfer paper. There's some people that I know using chalk and there's some people that use just other different ways of transferring that, but I'm just covering that up. You can just paint acrylic right over top the graphite, or I'm sorry, the charcoal. And so you can choose to do this or not, especially if you use that paper and you find that it left some of that remnants on there as well. So I'm doing this very loosely just with my, my yellow, cadmium yellow and titanium white. And so I'm trying to kind of make that blend in with the background. After I lay down my darkest tones, I then let work on my medium tones. And so what I'm going to do to create the underlayer and the shadows on the white part of Rizzo, I create a mixture of phthalo cyanin blue, pale blue, and titanium white. And so if you're painting a white cat, uh, this blue is a great undercolor. You can use blue, you can use uh, light brown, a dark brown. It kind of depends on how much light is in your reference photo. It also depends on the coat of your cat, but you always want to put an under a, a base coat down before you apply the main color of your cat.
something I really like to do, and you'll notice this in my other YouTube tutorials, but I will just continue adding in a lighter or darker color to the paint that I already created. So I just took the same blue and then I added white to it, just right next to it. And that color I'm using to uh, make that next lighter color. So I'm just progressing from dark to light, layering over top as I go, because acrylic paint dries pretty quick. And so I'm very loosely applying this lighter medium tone over top. And as we move on, we're just gonna progress lighter and lighter. Um, adding in more white or more yellow or light browns to our paint. The other thing that's important is when you're creating any pet portrait, you want to get down, you want to have color over the full pet first. So don't focus on details. You just want to cover, make sure that every part of the pet is covered in color. And so we're working on almost the last part. We have the eyes yet. And so right now I created a dark gray and I'm just filling in the inside of the ears and then we'll move on to the eyes and then we'll start getting into our details. Now I am grabbing my detail brush and I'm gonna work on the darkest tones of the eyes. And I'm combining cadmium yellow, titanium white, and crimson yellow. Now Rizzo's eyes are more yellow and your cat may have green eyes or blue, I, I just don't know. But you can, I just recommend creating the darker version of that. So I don't wanna go in with dark yellow, I want something a bit more dark and especially on the side of Rizzo's face that's more shaded. And so if you're doing blue eyes, maybe you wanna do a dark blue or even a dark purple. But the nice thing about acrylics is we can just layer right over top and we're treating the eyes just like we did the body where we're creating our darker colors first and then we progress to lighter. So on the left side of Rizzo's face, it's getting a lot less light. So I'm gonna keep that pretty dark. And then on the right side, I wanna add a little bit more yellow. So I added more cadmium yellow in here because that's getting more light than the other side. So as we have pretty much the majority of Rizzo completed, I just go in with my black and I want to fix up anything that I think is kind of off or that I painted over or that I need to adjust. 
And so take this time to kind of make any sort of adjustments with your black. I want to create a pinkish tone for the nose, just a little part of the nose because Rizzo has that cute little black spot on his nose. So I'm just mixing a little bit of tight, uh, crimson red with titanium white and using my detail brush I'm just painting in the sides. Then I pulled in some of that gray that we previously made for the ear and while those ears are still wet I go in and create kind of that pinkish uh, outline around the ears. Cats have a lot of blood in their ears just like dogs and so there's going to be a bit more red tone to it and so I do that on the sides and as well as kind of in the middle so I'm not covering over all that gray but still letting some of it shine through. Now you would never think that using a pinkish gray would make for a great shadow over a blue, but it really does. And that comes with exploring um, all sorts of paintings with color because this is something, a little tip for you, is if you wanna create a great shadow over some blue, just create a pinkish gray. And so now I am adding that on the shadow on the left side of Rizzo's nose 
And I also paint over the side of Rizzo's snout on that same side, uh, as well as on the left side of his body. So you'll see that I'm just kind of following down from his face down to his body and his feet with this shadow. Now that the ears are dry, I'm just using a light blue, almost white, but it has a little bit of blue in it. And with my flat brush, I'm using the edge of that flat brush to create the hairs in Rizzo's ears. Now this flat brush is kind of old and tattered and I kind of wish I used something a little bit more clean. Um, but if you have a good quality clean brush, that'll definitely make this step a lot easier. And if not, if you don't even have a flat brush, you can also use a liner brush or a detail brush, like a micro detail brush, those are always great for hair. My next color is going to be a lighter gray than the gray we created for the ears, the inside of the ears. So very little black, very little black. And I'm just going to layer that over top the darker tone over the snout around the uh, lower body. And we're just progressing, um, making it a little bit lighter than the color before.
So now I'm adding more white to that gray that we were previously using and I'm going to layer that again. That's going to be my next layer over top. Continuing to use the side of my brush to create that hair like texture. And this is an abstract painting, so it's not uh, all about making sure that the hairs are perfectly straight or the colors are perfectly laid on. This is very loose and freeing and just have fun with it. The next color I'm going to mix is phthalo cyan and blue with some titanium white and a little bit of Mars black. And I'm doing this because I'm going to create those highlights on the black fur. So if you're painting a black cat, uh, I always recommend using like a light blue, I'm sorry, a dark blue or a dark, a lighter purple. Um, you want it to be light enough so that it shows up over top the black, but not so dark that you can't even see it. And black is a really rich color, so you can still use a dark blue and, and a dark purple if it's not too dark. So that comes with experimenting. Um, you can test it, and if it's too dark, you can obviously paint over it and try again. And if it's too light, again, you can just paint over it. So don't be afraid to test things over top. Um, you can always fix these mistakes with acrylics because it dries really fast. And I'm applying this to the face, just the areas that the light is really hitting uh, Rizzo's face and side of the body. And just note that I'm I'm also kind of using the side of my the edge of my brush to create that hair light look. And so try and do that as best you can around the eyes without painting over the eyes. eyes are always very challenging for me and there's I often have to work it and work it to get it the way I like but cat eyes will always have that diamond shape uh, pupils and so it helps to have a really clean um, pointy detail brush to create those two points at the end of the pu pupil and then once I've uh, completed that I will go in and start applying those layers those lighter layers over top the base coat that we applied to the eye 
And so I'll just go in and create a lighter orange for the left side and then a lighter orangey yellow for the right side. And so right now I'm going to start with my right, which is titanium white with some cadmium yellow. And this is pretty light. I don't want to make it too light because it's not my final highlight. And on the left side, it's going to be a bit darker. So I still use, uh, I used Indian yellow because that's a bit darker yellow. Um, and so that's kind of how I, I do the eyes. I just kind of progress my colors and I especially love to do two different colored eyes. That's always something I like to do in my paintings. So then I cleaned out my brush and just with straight white, I'm adding those little dots, those highlights on Rizzo's eyes. And you kind of, you really want to do this when you're the pupil, the black pupil is completely dried because many times I've tried to apply this highlight and black got in it. So that just doesn't do anything for us. We want that highlight to be really light and I will often use a light yellow or a white. Um, and so, and then I also rework, I add some more highlights to the black part of Rizzo. I'm using my detail brush to really make it look more hair like and I don't want this too light so that it looks like he's got white hair here. He does have some white hairs, but for the most part, he's just getting um, a highlight right around there. So this is just very loosely applied to the cheeks, to the chin, to the forehead, and I'm using my micro detail brush. Now I'm using my even skinnier micro detail brush to create the whiskers. And to kind of explain what I'm doing, I am, I watered down white so that it's very watery, especially because I don't want too thick of a brush to, like if there's too much paint on my brush, it creates a thick whisker. And so I want a really thin layer of paint on my micro brush and I just kind of start from one end and then glide it over the canvas as slowly as I can. And you don't want to push hard on this or else it'll create too much of a thick whisker. And so we want those whiskers going on Rizzo's forehead. There's a couple there. There's some, of course, on the sides of his nose. And cats will even have whiskers on their cheeks. I don't see any here. And you can also take this time to kind of rework the, the hair on the ears and add any whiskers that you see fit to add. Last thing that I really want to make note of is cat eyes often have sort of like an outline or they'll have the inside of their eye being gray or brown and so I just want to capture that um, with my detail brush kind of outlining the eye just the corners um, cats have these really wide eyes and there's often this outline around it and but you want it really thin and so you really want a good thin brush when you're doing this and you don't need to add very much. Um, it, it just kind of adds that final touch to it. So I'm gonna wash out my brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more white and I'm gonna create those final highlights on the eye. So you can kind of frame the eye with your white or a little bit darker version of your white. And don't forget, there is a bit of a shadow in the nostrils. 
So all I did was just kind of outline with black around the nose so that you can tell where the nostrils are. So there you have it. You have completed Rizzo. If you have any questions at all, just let me know. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.